interest mm -hmm. to the people in Wenham. Of course, at the same time, uh, the, the people got motivated after seeing these, and they wanted prints from yep. it. And there I am, and I, I'm in the dark room again, you know, yeah. so. A lot of friends came out of the woodwork at that point. That yes, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, in 70 and 71, I spent uh, cleaning and enveloping uh, 2,104 by 5 glass plates, and that was uh, primarily uh, people pictures. <laughs> And I have yet to put the album. I have two albums of people that, that I've got to assemble. Uh -huh. And uh, uh, these albums, uh, the, the prints themselves are, are all in polypropylene sleeves uh, pages. Yep. And uh, so, so to preserve the, yep. the, the photograph. This, this should be a treasure for the genealogical people uh seeking to trace their families and so forth what's these come out yeah we find people. we find their their uh, their evidence uh you know people will make uh, a comment and and uh i can either prove or disprove it by the photograph sure. sometimes uh some well <laughs> that, that these these things get uh i think the the best one is the uh, milestone in front of the cemetery where somebody said that this was a bad guy and they wouldn't allow him to be buried in the cemetery, so they buried him out, you know, in the street. But that isn't true at all. It has nothing to do with it. That. Oh, it sounds good yeah. though. But uh, right now, that that particular milestone uh, has been fair game for 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 automobiles hitting it. Mm. That. They they put it into the wall, so now they got to reach yeah. into the wall. Yeah. The one uh, in front of the town hall uh, is is pretty well protected, yeah. and the one down in South Hamilton, we have three stones in Wenham, uh, 1710. Uh, they call them milestones, but really the one uh, in the town hall is a half milestone uh -huh. because it's a, it, exactly a half mile from the other two. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, now moving right along on the, on the calendar here, what happened next? Well, uh, uh, I purchased uh, uh, a metal file uh, knowing that, that metal uh, or steel metal was better to house these things in than, than uh, something like wood. These were in wooden cases and, and uh, the reading on the cases said they were cowboys came in and that means they could have acid spilled and of course some of the woods are acidic anyway and, and this is a bad environment for yeah. for emulsions on, on glass plate. Now the paper back in Mr. Conus day it was full of acid was it not? The, the, all, yes that's why it disintegrated okay. yeah okay. yeah and and the God knows what the, uh, uh, the, the type of uh, uh, cement used you know for the seam yep. uh, and so it's best uh, to uh, in knowing the harm that had come uh, they have now perfected what is called an acid free envelope and this has a seam on the side in the bottom so uh, if someone doesn't put it in the envelope the correct way, yep. uh, which would be the, the emulsion facing the front here, we'll have uh, to contend uh, with the then it, it won't do too much damage. Sure. Uh, there's maybe a little edge damage. Sure. So uh, then, then we, uh, uh, we, all this time, we continue with uh, satisfying public request prints. Sure. And th this would be something they fill out a farm and. And when I, when I get down in the dark room and, and get the uh, thing printed out, then so I'm the only one that's really handling the the, the, the glass plate negatives, and uh, that's why uh, I have these gloves. When when I handle the Conan negatives, uh, it's much better to have gloves than have moist or, or, sure. or, or greasy fingers, which sure. which would certainly attack the emulsion. Absolutely. Yeah. And you can walk around with them and people might think you're a doctor, Harold. Yeah. <laughs> the, uh, in, in 81 and 82 uh, was the instrumental time in, in getting the Enon building and uh, in, in finally uh, uh, getting that to the Wynnum Museum. Uh, then we had the job of uh, how are we going to uh, house this collection, where and how? Mm -hmm. uh, th there was a first suggestion that I have the cellar, and I said, no way, I have the first floor. Uh -huh. I don't want to be in a basement because there's too much dampness sure. in the basement. And uh, then uh, uh, the, 
I, I did a study on what's the best way to house the collection. And uh, I was impressed with uh, one of the uh, uh, methods that, that I saw in Boston. Uh, they had an industrial steel rack, uh, which, uh, I, I, yeah, we show here. And uh, so I said, that's a good idea. I think that, that will work. And where they have these acid-free envelopes now, uh, I had to change all the envelopes that I first did and throw those out. And, and now I have everything in acid-free envelopes. Of course, I had to uh, uh, you know, put the information, transfer it from the old envelopes to the new. Sure. And then they have what they call acid-free boxes. So the, the best way to store these is uh, I have a, a, a box that takes so many glass plates, mm. and, and that, that's how we got it here. Oh. And I mark the, the numbers, yeah. uh, and, and the rack seemed to be just about the right size. Yeah. <laughs> and you got to be in shape to lift one of those boxes, too, as uh, I Amen. Recall. Yeah, so it's, uh, I found that out. But, but uh, the, the heaviest ones, naturally, the 8x10s, yeah. uh, but uh, that's, I've been lugging stuff around the garden. So, sure, yeah. sure. So uh, now we're up to about 82 or 83. Yes, and uh, then uh, in, in 87 uh, w was the uh, time that we moved the collection from the attic to the Enon building. It was ready to, so that meant that we uh, got to think about uh, climate control. And climate control uh, essentially means uh, determining what you can have for a relative humidity variation and what you can have for a temperature variation. Uh -huh. We did have a heating system installed that, that worked in the summertime as a, an air conditioning system. Yeah. So uh, we can change over. When we no longer need heat in the building, we can change over to air conditioning, which uh, brings the moisture out of the air. Yeah. And and uh, it also cools down, uh, especially on hot days. So uh, if we keep the place locked up uh, and and keep the doors closed, it works very nicely. Yeah. Uh, you were telling me though, like milk in the cows, you have to go have to go over there. Oh yes, a couple uh, times a day well, or once it, a it, day. Well, it's it winter time is is my. Uh, uh, <laughs> Run time. I have to go over once, uh, once every other day. Uh -huh. uh, I, I'm, a, I'm a sucker for punishment. <laughs> I, fact, I, I, I felt that uh, one humidifier in the window wasn't enough, so I got two of them going. Uh, we haven't got a sophisticated system because it would cost probably ten thousand dollars to, yeah. to. Uh, so, so I, I but lug pails of water. But it works, though. Yeah, it works very nicely, and uh, we have con find the climate to within 15 degrees uh -huh. variation and within a relative humidity of uh, 15 percent. Uh -huh. And uh, we have established that uh, we can live with a temperature of 55 to 70 degrees uh, and a relative humidity of, uh, say, 40 to 60, no, is it 40 to 65? Yeah. yeah. Well, that's reasonable. This is summer, winter, all season. Yeah, we, ha we have to change the system uh, to, to keep the thing in, in balance. Uh, uh, and it's coming up at the end of May. I, I shut down the, uh, the winter system, yeah. which no longer calls for uh, humidity. There's plenty in the air. Yeah. And, and, and we run the air conditioning system. Yeah. Now, everything's fine. Uh, if every if everything's working, but occasionally uh, I'll go down there and it'll be mighty cold in the winter time, mm -hmm. and so what happens is I, I go screaming over to the to the museum and and, and, and tell them to get the repairman down to get the furnace sure. going, Absolutely. you know, because we don't want uh, extremes. Uh, Absolutely. Uh, the very fact that they're in boxes and they're also in individual envelopes, it would take a little while to uh, for for the temperature to, to change yep. on the plate. So and eventually, it would I, yeah, get to the right. So. Right. If it, if it went a week, it would probably mm -hmm. uh, stabilize and, and go down. So you don't you don't take long trips and vacations, like my friend, do you? At this point, in time? Uh, I I see 
two weeks is the maximum, but I do it more in the summertime. <laughs> Uh, does that bring us up to the present time, or is there something else you wanted to do? Well, let's you? see. Um, oh, I, I had to, uh, I got the uh, polypropylene uh, uh, pages for, for the notebooks. Uh -huh. I first had uh, uh, those regular 8x10, uh, 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 they have a black, uh, I, don't, I don't know what the material is, probably uh, polyethylene or something like that, not a very good grade. Yeah. But so so and also the polypropylene is uh, is a lot stronger and it, it it can take a lot more abuse of people looking sure. over the collection. Sure, sure thing. Well, then we're pretty much up to date then in terms of uh, of the uh, history of what you've done. And again, I must say, Harold, I just can't say enough about the wonderful job you've done and you've taken me through it. I. For, for the last uh, few years, I've admired your books and albums over there in mm -hmm. the, uh, in the uh, library. But uh, when you took me backstage, so to speak, into the Edon building and showed me what you've done, I was so impressed. And uh, <laughs> the, the community uh, owes you a great debt of, uh, of thanks. Because well, you wouldn't do it if you didn't like to. This is true. Yeah, this yeah, is true. Yeah. But still, it's a job well done, my friend. I had to fit it in with all the other things <laughs> I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's let's move out now to some of his okay. pictures here. Uh, he lived on Main Street, Harold. Yes. Uh, most of his life, I understand. Uh, family uh, house there. Uh, it was. I don't know the whether I got a, a actual date, but uh, he was living there all his life. I M think many years. Yeah. Uh, from time right. to time, he would take a picture of either friends or family, uh, front or backyard. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have a few here that we're going to put on the camera, so yeah. I'll just... This, this one might be interesting because this is the Conant family. Uh -huh. That's coming up. We're yeah. going to okay. do that one in just okay. a minute. First one I have here is uh, the Dodge family uh, at Barker. Um, well, I think I think this one would okay. would, would get us right. first let's, because let's uh, this is direct family, and then uh, do the Dodges get into marriage family. Okay. Yeah. This one here is yeah. a is a is the family I'm right. looking at. Okay, and we have here Lydia Ann Conant. This is from left to right, I would presume. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Lydia Ann Conant Dodge, Priscilla Howe Conant, mm -hmm. Carolyn E. Conant Kimball. Mm -hmm. All the main names are in there. Back row, left to right, Woodbury Page Conant, mm -hmm. Benjamin Howe Conant. Now these these two Conants in the background look somewhat alike, and uh, they're half brothers. I see. Uh, uh, Mrs. Conant uh, was married earlier no. to, I think it was a uh, Captain John Bradstreet, uh -huh. and uh, I guess he passed away. No. And, uh, so. Uh, there is a similarity, yeah. probably through the mother's gene. Why don't we mention the, the history behind this family name, Harold? The Conant name. We were talking about that before the table. Oh, oh, yeah, wanted yeah. to be sure. That oh, we, I didn't know. <laughs> yeah. We, we yeah. had uh, mentioned the fact that uh, Benjamin is a direct descendant of Roger. That's correct. Seventh generation that, at that time, uh -huh. I figured. Yeah. yeah. And so uh, I guess all the Conants that have sprung from from Roger and Salem uh, have uh, included him. Bill. And well, that's a name to behold here in this area. Well, we've heard of it before, North I Beverly think. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, around, yeah. Around Conan the area. Street. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So, as I say, we, we, did ha we do have some pictures here. The, this, uh, these are dated 1890, in the summer of 1890. So this was, this was really the beginning of his career as a uh, professional of the day a photographer, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. at least the, in terms of the records that we have. They, he might have taken pictures earlier, but they don't survive. And one, uh, this one here, Harold, we have uh, of the uh, uh, young people here sitting out in the hammock in the oh, backyard. Oh, yeah. Well, now, you see this, uh, this gets into uh, this. I think this picture, if it came... Uh, yep. We have it. We have it right here. And and this this would fill us in some of the blanks. Okay. We have a, a Calvin Dodge. This mm -hmm. is the Calvin Dodge family that we're yeah. looking at here. Yes. And at the uh, at Conant's house on Main Street in Wenham, left to right, Benjamin Conant Dodge, uh, who was the son of the gentleman sitting, I believe, on the right, and Louisa Dodge was the daughter, and then mother and father Lydia Ann Conant Dodge and Calvin B Dodge. Right. And and this was one of. Uh, Conant's sisters. I this, see. And and and, and uh, Louisa is uh, 
a, a backer. Yep. This is, it gets into the backer claim. Yep. A lot of, lot of familiar names that relate into the, into the code of right. uh, genealogy. And that was taken in the summer of 1890, and then around Thanksgiving time, there's a group that gathered here, and again, pretty much uh, the same uh, group we have from left to right, uh, Benjamin Dodge, uh, the son of, of uh, Calvin, mm -hmm. Carol and Elizabeth Conant, Kimball, mm -hmm. get all those names in, Woodbury Page Conant, Correct. that was Benjamin's half-brother, and Ann Louisa Dodge Barker, daughter mm -hmm. of Calvin, mm -hmm. Walter Lincoln Barker, husband of Louisa, Lydia Ann, mother, uh, and uh, Calvin, Calvin B. Dodge. Yeah. Uh, and the next picture moving here, a year later, on May 15, 1891, we have a, uh, what could be a generic family group here sitting uh, in his yard. Yeah, this is three identical? generations. Yeah. Uh, yeah. This is, this is, um, uh, this, this girl here, which uh, was married to, uh, oh, I think, uh, this was, uh, I, well, Suffice to say that it's, a, it's a, one of his first pictures, I think, Carol, that we, uh, that we have a uh, year. He's, he's a year into his, into his uh, sojourn here as a photographer.